Amen. 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 We never trust it, y'all. We never trust it. So, we're going to come out of the book of Numbers again. This is kind of like a part two to last week's message, um, which was very powerful. Um, and Numbers chapter 14. And if you recall, the message was reject or reset. Okay? we got choices. God says he's a free will guy. So, Numbers chapter 14. And I would respect the reading of the word. If you're physically able, rest unto your feet. If you're using the church Bible, just say starts at page 105. Amen. Father God, I want to thank you, Lord, for everything that you are doing, hidden and seen. Father, I know that you have given us the authority to dispatch angels. I call on them now from the north, south, east, west. Allow them to put a ring of holy fire around this house. Father, I pray your watchmen stand at the front door and the back door and that the blood of Jesus remains over the doorpost. Lord, I ask that you would open the heavens. Flood this house with your rhema word. Flood this house with your peace, your power, and your presence, and your Shekinah glory. Decrease, Lisa, and increase your spirit man within me. Allow your Holy Spirit to pour out into this place. Father, healing, deliverances, being set free so that they truly understand that you are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Lord, I thank you. I honor you. I adore you, Lord. I am absolutely nothing without you. But through you, Lord, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I pray, Lord, that you will put this word, write it on my heart, that when it comes off of my lips, that it will penetrate. That those that have just recently been fresh seed in the garden, it will water the garden. Or it will even be increased this day. Yes. Because your word says one will plant, one will water, you will give increase. Yes. Father, I pray that you will shift the hardened hearts. You will open up the minds. You will allow the blind to see, the deaf to hear, and the mute to speak the word of God. Yes. Father, that you will transform the dead to the living. We have been spiritually dead for so long. And making excuses. Touch those on live. Touch those that are passing through and have never seen Sovereign Shepherd before. Allow them to get a rhema word, a life-changing word. One word from a prophet can change your life forever. One word from God can be literally life-altering. I bless you and I honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And amen. Numbers. Chapter 14. We're going to start at verse 26. And the subtitle out of New King James says, Death Sentence on the Rebels. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation? Who complain against me? I have heard the complaints which the children of Israel make against me. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in this wilderness. All of you who were numbered according to your entire number from 20 years old and above, Except for Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. You shall by no means enter the land which I swore I would make you dwell in. But your little ones, whom you said would be victims, I will bring in. And they shall know the land which
which you have despised. But as for you, your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness. And your sons shall be shepherds in the wilderness forty years and bear the brunt of your infidelity until your carcasses are consumed in the wilderness according to the numbers of days in which you spied out the land. Forty days. For each day you shall bear guilt one year. Namely, forty years. You shall know my rejection. I, the Lord, have spoken this. I will surely do so to all this evil congregation who are gathered together against me. In this wickedness they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. Now the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land, who returned and made all the congregation complain against him by bringing a bad report of the land, those very men who brought the evil report about the land died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, <coughs> remained alive. All of the men who went to spy out the land. This is the reading of the word. You may be seated. Can you turn that there off for me? The title of today's message is God is warning you. I'm going to say it again. God is warning you. Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, how long shall I bear with this evil congregation? How much longer have I got to put up with these complainers who complain against me? I have heard the complaints which the children of Israel make against me. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, not Moses. Just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in the wilderness. All of you who were numbered, according to your entire number, from 20 years old and above. So there was a thing about being 20. When you hit 20, you were considered an adult. So, and in real life, now, 21 is the legal age, right? So, last week, we left off with God's instructions. He was instructing Moses to move out into the wilderness by way of the Red Sea. And the reason why he did not want them to go the way that they were going is because they were going to get set up. See, God knows things about you that you don't even know about yourself. And so a lot of times he tries to protect you from unnecessary problems, but we seem to like it the hard way, right? And we want to do it the way we want to do it, okay? And he told them, the Amalekites, verse 25 of 14 says, the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwell in the valley. Tomorrow, turn and move out into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Because they were going to plot to attack them. Now, even though these ratchet children of his were not doing what they were supposed to be doing, and God was definitely not pleased with this evil congregation who complained against him. He warns them. 
His warning is to turn them towards the Red Sea. Okay? If they would have continued going the way they were going, they would have been attacked. Okay? Going the way they wanted to go. I, I need to stress that. Going the way they wanted to go, they would have been attacked. Now, despite God's anger and being angry, he still protected them from their enemies. The children of Israel have up to this point murmured and complained so much about dying in the wilderness that God finally said, Amen. Amen. Amen to your passionate request. You want to die in the wilderness? Amen. I'm going to let you die in the wilderness. You don't want what I have for you? Amen. Stay where you're at. I ain't got time for you. I need to deal with some folks that's ready to be dealt with. I need to deal with folks that understand they don't have time to do it the way they want to do it. So, this ain't going to be an easy message, y'all. And this is why I've been through what I've been through this week. He said amen to their passionate request. You know, I, I, I was trying to go back and figure out how many times did the children of Israel say, why don't we just die here? Let us just die in the wilderness. Because that's all you heard them say. Why did he bring us up out of Egypt? Why did he bring us out of Egypt? We were, at least we were being fed. We had a place to stay. And God is like, I told you crazy people, I'm going to take you to a land flowing with milk and honey. Yeah. But you still in bondage in your mind because you don't want to be free. Right. You don't want the blessings that I'm giving you. You say you do, but your fruit is completely opposite. Huh. All you do is murmur and complain. Amen. You don't admit that I told you I've given you authority over your enemies. You don't admit that you're the head and not the tail. You don't admit that I said I was going to take you into the promised land. Above and beyond what you could think or imagine, I'm going to bless you with. But you keep looking at, well, what about now? What about me? What about this? What about that? Well, what about him? What about her? And God is like, listen. You want to keep complaining? I'm going to leave you here. I, you done said it enough times that I'm going to grant your wish. Okay. How many of you have ever read that scripture and put two and two together like that? Because that's basically what he's telling. Their sins would be their downfall. And the very words that they spoke would be the trap that trapped them. And it would be ultimately their demise. I want to remind the church slash the true body of Christ. Again, life and death are in the power of your tongues. And some of the things that we say we just think, we just saying them. And God is saying, no, you just cursed your whole lineage. Mm -hmm. oh, Jesus. You just cursed your marriage. You just cursed your daughter. Mm -hmm. You just cursed your son. You just cursed your body. You just cursed your finances. I'm broke, I'm broke, I'm broke, I'm broke, I'm broke, I'm broke. Well, you gonna stay broke too. I would tell myself, God did not bring me this far Ooh, to let me go. I don't know what you got for me, Lord, but I know dang on well, you did not bring me this far to let me go. You brought me out of the wilderness for some reason, and 
I don't know what it is yet, but I know I ain't supposed to keep staying here. I know you, you allowed me to go through the turmoil, the torture, the pain, the blockages, the bad relationships, the discord in my family, the dysfunction in my generation, the brokenness. The separation from my loved ones. You allowed all of that for a reason. So I know you didn't bring me this far to let me go. But yet, I was surrounded by murmurers and complainers. Oh, come on. That kept telling me, you tripping. That ain't what we supposed to be doing. God didn't tell you go put no church up. You, you, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know where you got that from. You, you, how you gonna open a church? You ain't even ever been to seminary. How you gonna do this? How you gonna lead people? What you mean do pearls again? Ain't nobody gonna show up on no Saturday to come listen to you. You ain't Joyce Myers. I know I'm not. That's fine. But I know what God told me to do. Ain't nobody gonna get on live and watch you on end time noon time. Thankfully. Real? Thankfully. Well, if it's just me ministering to me, then I'm gonna do it. Because that's what he told me to do. Huh? Oh, take the women, pay it for their whole trip. Charge them 100, 250 bucks for a three, four thousand dollar weekend trip. Ain't nobody gonna go to that. You can't get 20 women in one house. They not going to get along. Ooh, Jesus. Really? That ain't what God told me. So I'm going. Every move that I was being told to make, the devil was in my ear. And usually it was somebody very close to me. You can't just open the church. You need a 501c3. <laughs> huh? No, I don't. Well, you need a mission. No, I don't. That ain't what God told me. Come on. Now, what if I've been listening to everybody else? We wouldn't be sitting here right now. Amen. 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 And I mean, I had backlash from my children, my husband, my aunties, my uncles, everybody in my family. Even friends, so-called friends, huh? Now they secretly watching me in the background trying to be me. <laughs> I got a fan club of witches trying to curse me. Huh? That's when you know you're doing something right. When the witches come out. You know that song, Freaks Come Out at Night. <laughs>
This is crazy. And, 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 and the sad part is, it's real. Yeah. The things of this world are things of this world, and they don't like us. Yeah. They don't like you. Mm -mm. My baby told me, Janai said, Granny, people really be acting funny towards me. I said, baby, it ain't you, and please don't think it's your looks. Amen. Okay. It's your spirit. Amen. It is your spirit. And don't get caught up with what you look like in your body type. Because that ain't got nothing to do with who your essence of your being is. Okay. Okay. Huh? And they're not going to like you because you're light in a dark, dying world. So quit trying to fit in, saints. You are the salt of the earth. Yes, Lord. For this season. Yes, Lord. Without us, it ain't going to be preserved. Life and death is in the power of our tongue. Yes, yes. And those that had murmured and complained, huh? They done messed up. These who were numbered for great favor and blessings with a land flowing with milk and honey would be condemned to die in the wilderness and never see the promised land. Wait, how do you go from getting a word from the prophet that he is going to use you to be blessed, to be a blessing, to be a generational blesser, to dying in the wilderness? Huh? And being cut off. What happened? What happened? God gave them a promise. And he, and, he, and he promised them a promise of blessing. But they rejected and they rebuked God. So they would never see it. But, somebody say, but. but. Let's go to verse 30, verse 30, verse 30. But, except for Caleb, yes, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. You shall by no means, somebody say no means. No, no means. Into the land which I swore I would make you dwell in. <laughs> uh, what? But your little ones, whom you said would be victims, I will bring in and they shall know the land which you have despised. Ooh, you. But as for you, your carcasses, shall fall in this wilderness and your sons shall be shepherds in the wilderness. Huh? They, 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 what? What? Listen to this. 40 years. 40 years. Listen, up to this point, they was on their way to an 11 day journey. And now, because of their disobedience, because too many cooks in the kitchen, too many I don't like the prophet, I can do a better job than the prophet. I don't like having to be told what to do. I'm going to go do what I want to do. What happened? 40 years. And bear the brunt of your infidelity until your carcasses are consumed in the wilderness. According to the number of days, check this out, just the cold part. According to the number of days which you spied out the land. They were gone for 40 days spying. For each day, you shall bear guilt one year. For every day they were in the land spying. God cursed them with a year to repay for a day. You shall bear your guilt one year, namely 40 years, and you shall know my rejection. I, the Lord, have spoken this. I will surely do so to all this evil congregation who are gathered together against me. In this wilderness, they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. Now, 
the next generation, Caleb and Joshua, were men of faith. Their hearts loved God. And their minds were minds of free men, not slaves or losers who would never make it to the promised land. Listen, if you got to constantly tell yourself that, you know, I'm nobody. Nobody loves me. I'm not going to make it. I'm not worthy of God's love and his blood. You ain't worthy. I hate to, I hate to tell you that, but you ain't. Because God should not have to beg you to accept his love. God is a free will God. Everything he does is by choice. Huh? Everything. I think about me and uh, 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 Sister Toy Toyer going to pray for that baby. And I remember the Lord telling me he was going to heal that baby. The baby was two years old, got hit by a car. We get there, the baby on life support, they got 15 minutes before they pull the plug. We start praying to mama, to daddy, me, her, and, 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 and it was like a vacuum. Literally, I, I can't make this up because I, I didn't say nothing. I waited to hear it from somebody else. Like, coming out of my hands, I could feel virtue pouring into this little baby's body. <laughs> and the baby's eyes looked like they was trying to open. And a tear started to roll out her eye. And the dad was like, I think she's getting ready to wake up. And the mama broke away. You need to get out. You need to go. Stop. I can't do this. What? What? This show baby on the table fighting for her life. And God was about to do a miracle. A miracle. And you rejected it. The nurse made us leave. We go in the hallway, we praying, and lo and behold, another nurse taps me on the shoulder and says, We at Oakland Children's Hospital. You can't pray here. Huh? We can't pray here. I mean, it wasn't like I was shouting. And we was quiet. Like, Father God, in the name of Jesus, you're going to disturb the children. Huh? So we walk down the hall to leave. There's a room full of people that are in there watching a football game. Cheering. Who ride? About 40 people. And I found out they was all relatives to this baby. Oh my goodness. So we leave. And I tell T, I say, hey, God said he was gonna, he was gonna, he was gonna save her. Call me when you get the miracle. Now that's what kind of faith I'm working in, y'all. I knew that baby was coming up off that ICU room. I get home. She called me. She says, sis, the baby gone. What? What do you mean the baby is gone? No! No, 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 no! God told me he was going to heal her. Oh, Jesus. What are you talking about? I was angry. We hung up the phone, and I'm going to be honest, I cussed that God. What the bleep and bleep and bleep did you have me go there for? Why did you do that, Lord? And in the midst of me ranting, my phone <clears throat> rings. It's another minister, and I'm like, what is she calling me for? I answer. She, was, she functioned prophetically. She said, sis, the Lord just told me, stop what I was doing and call you. Are you okay? No, I'm not. And I tell her what happened. She said, let me tell you. God sent you there to bridge that baby back to him. That baby's parents are non-believers. But that baby belonged to him. And he needed you to connect that child back so she could go home to him. So you did heal the baby. But you got to understand, there's a different level of healing. I was still a new minister. She said there's a complete healing, which is to go home with the Lord 
and a healing to remain here on earth. And when she told me, I had a peace in my spirit. I did not, I did not like it because I didn't fully understand it. But I got it. We have to understand there are things that are happening. Lightning speed in the blink of an eye. What did the scripture say? In the blink of an eye, two will be in the field. One will be taken up. It's going to happen so quick your head goes spin. And you're going to be like, wait, I thought I was one of the ones that was supposed to be. And he's going to be like, away from me, you worker of iniquity. I didn't know you. You too busy murmuring and complaining. You're too busy focusing on all the bad stuff. Instead of letting go and letting God do what I said I would do. He don't want no slaves or losers. He wanted somebody that would believe they would make it to the promised land. Caleb and Joshua not only believed God, but they trusted God. See, Moses and Aaron, cold twist, would fall in the wilderness. They wouldn't even make it. Their sons would end up shepherding for 40 years and never make it into their promised destinations either. You see, Moses... sin. He was guilty just like the others. See, Moses sinned because he allowed some things to happen. Huh? He allowed some things to happen. He, he, he. God told Moses, but as for you, your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness. Wow. The promise of the promised land ended in tragedy because of disobedience and people pleasing. Moses agreed to let the people send out spies. He wanted to make sure before we enter this land, it was going to be safe. God already told you, I'm giving you the land. So why would you need to send somebody to check it out? Let me test the waters before I go in. And God is like, oh, because you tested the waters, I'm going to test you now. And now you're not going to be able to do what you were supposed to do. See, you just made it harder for yourself. I told you to do it like this, and you did it like that. I said go, and you waited. Send me another warning, God. Send me another sign, God. Send me another prophet, God. Send me another message, God. I didn't trust you the first time. Well... They didn't trust God's word. They doubted him and they needed proof of what was awaiting them in the land flowing with milk and honey. What? He told you it was a land flowing with milk and honey. Sound familiar? God gives us a promise, but yet we want to manipulate everything to move the way we want it to move. Moses and Aaron should have, by faith, taken God's word and took control over the land. Period. He said, it's yours. Go get it. But instead, they sent the spies. Because of their disobedience, they blew it. God said, oh, you didn't trust me? Oh, you will not be getting my blessings. As a matter of fact, your kids, it's going to be your grandkids. Y'all done messed up. You done messed up. And they would end up dying in the wilderness. 
They fussed and complained so much. God said, you want to let the people keep speaking in your ear about dying in the wilderness? Well, guess what? You they leader. You're going to die with them. You're not going to make it out of here either. You love them so much that you you letting them keep you from growing and going the way that I've been trying to get you to go and grow? Well, you're going to be right here stuck with them because you showing me where your honor is. You showing me who you serve. You serve these people. You don't serve me. Pretty scary, huh, God? Pretty scary, huh? Yep, yep. When he showed it to me, I was like, wow. That's scary, Lord. Moses and Aaron allowed others to destroy their blessings. What a tragedy. Beloved, God says we must walk by faith, not by sight. The land was a promise by faith for those who trusted God by faith. I, I, I want to read something. I want to read something. Let's go to Numbers 13. Uh, starting at the 17th verse. Then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, go up this way to the south and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like. Huh? He told you what it was like. Flowing with milk and honey. You big dummy. Whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities <coughs> they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, whether there are forests there or not, be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. You want some of the blessings but you ain't doing what you was told to do. <clears throat> now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. The first fruit, y'all. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rehob near the entrance of Hamath. And they went up through the south and came to Hebron. Ahimon, Sheshai, and Talmai. The descendants of Anak were there. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. Then they came to the valley of Eshal and there cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. They carried it between two of them on a pole. That's how big it was. It took two men to carry this cluster of grapes. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. The place was called the Valley of Eshel because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. They returned from spying out the land after how many days? 40 days. Now they departed, came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the city of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh they brought back word to them and to all the congregation, showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It is, no, excuse me, it truly flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. So wait, God's word wasn't good enough? They need evidence. God's word wasn't enough. You needed a spy to go check the land. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified, very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. Hattites, Jebusites, Amorites dwell in the mountains. The Canaanites dwell by the sea along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. 
And they gave the children of Israel a bad report. A bad report of the land which they spied out. The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants. The descendants of Anak came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. They went back and lied to the congregation. They went against what God said to do. God said, go. And they said, no. And then he tried to give them reprieve through the mouth of little Caleb. We got this. Let's go. Oh, no. We can't overtake them. There are too many. We're going to be losers. So 40 days of disobedience turned to 40 years. Each day you shall bear guilt. One year, 40 years, and you shall know my rejection. 40 years to purify and to repent, to rid the flesh of unbelief, rebellion, and rejection. All that must die in the wilderness before receiving God's promises. So many of us are consumed with God's blessings, but yet we forget the blesser. He makes it very, very clear. The old creature cannot live in God's, in God's promises. All things must pass away and be created new before receiving God's true blessings. This is a huge place in history where God's relationship changes drastically towards his children. <laughs> Beloved, our old nature must die in order for our new nature to live for God. Right. Amen. They despised the promised land. They complained. They didn't listen. And God punished them. Thirty-five says, I will surely do so to all this evil congregation who are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed and they shall die. Beloved, we must truly understand that as long as we operate in flesh, we will never enter into God's rest and promises or overflow. 36 is now the men of Moses sent to spy out the land who returned and made all the congregation complain against him by bringing a bad report of the land. Those very men who brought the evil report about the land died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunan, remained alive of the men who went to spy out the land. Mm -hmm. The very men that delivered this false report died by a plague immediately. God allowed the rest huh, to be in Exodus for a total of 40 years until all those who touched and agreed with the spies died off. And all that was left were the 20 year olds and youngers. Joshua and Caleb were the only two that survived out the original group. Mm -hmm. Sons and daughters of the Most High God, you must recognize the similarities of the people then and the people now. The plague, the pandemic came to destroy those who were hard-hearted, who accepted sickness. And there has been a threat over us. And even the Pope has been a test. God has blessed his children with his promises. 
And we must change our hearts and try. Huh? We must try. We must strip off all flesh and put on the new creature in Christ Jesus. If we remain in our own mindset, we will be just as those who wandered for 40 days to investigate the promises of God. But it turned into a punishment of 40 years. We cannot function in our own strength or wisdom. <clears throat> we must not make, uh, make ourselves our own gods, our own judge, our own independent way of thinking because we won't make it. We must take heed, saints, to truly developing a real relationship with God. Amen. Yes. And we must follow the Lord in every area of our lives. We must truly have a spirit of God. His watchmen need to truly be watching and understanding God will equip you with a spiritual knowledge from the spirit realm, not the natural realm. It's time to manifest the promises of God and walk in your God-given promises and live in his peace and his favor. Those who cause disruption and interruption to God's plans, they will be punished severely. God always uses his prophets to give warnings. Don't ignore the warnings. We cannot ignore the warnings anymore. Too many examples of God threatening to punish disobedience and sin for us to ignore. I want to turn to Exodus uh, 4 24. Just jot it down. And it came to pass on the way at the encampment that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. The Lord was going to meet Moses to kill Moses. Then Zephora took, that was his wife, took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at Moses' feet and said, Surely you are a husband of blood to me. God gave Moses' instruction to circumcise all the boys. And Moses did not circumcise his son. And God went to go meet him to kill him. And his wife pulls the knife, uh, a stone and cuts her uh, male child's penis foreskin and throw it at her husband's feet to save his life. God ain't playing with us. God sought to kill Moses after eight years of grooming. He invested eight years for the assignment before he sent him to go talk to Pharaoh. Eight, the number means new beginnings. It was upon him. Moses' sin, again, was not cutting the foreskin of his son as God instructed. Let's go to Exodus 32 and 8. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molded calf and worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and indeed it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them 
And I will make a great, make of you a great nation. He wanted to kill them then. The people. Huh? Listen. Let's go to uh, verse 31. Then Moses returned to the Lord and said, Oh, these people have committed a great sin, have made for themselves a God of gold. Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, but if not, I pray, blot me out of your book, which you have written. And the Lord said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot him out of my book. Huh? Blot out of his book? Oh wait, that wasn't enough? Go to Exodus 33, 3. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst, lest I consume you on the way, for you are a stiff-necked people. And when the people heard the bad, this bad news, they mourned. And no one put on his ornaments, jewelry. For the Lord had said to Moses, Say to the children of Israel, you are a stiff-necked people. I could come up in your midst in one moment and consume you. Now therefore, take off your ornaments that I may know what to do with you. Wow. So the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by Mount Horeb. They removed their jewelry. Let's talk about King David. Huh? What, what about King David? King David called a census to determine how many men were of fighting age without God's permission. 2 Samuel chapter 24, starting at verse 12. Go, now this is God talking to the prophet Gad. Go and tell David, thus says the Lord, I offer you three things. Choose one of them for yourself that I may do it to you. So God let him pick his own punishment. So Gad came to David, told him, and he said to him, Shall seven years of famine come to you in your land? Or shall you flee three months before your enemies while they pursue you? Or shall there be three days plague in your land? Now consider... And see what answer I should take back to him who sent me. And David said to Gad, I am in great distress. Please let us fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. But do not let me fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel from the morning to the appointed night, from Dan to Beersheba, 70 thousand men of the people died. Is anybody listening? Amen. Is anybody listening? Beloved, God is warning you. He said, turn from your sinful, thoughtful ways. You need to go deep into his word. You really need to look at you. Quit yeah. looking at everybody else. Because you are the problem. Yes. You the problem. Yes. Ain't nobody else the problem. You the problem. You got a word for everybody else. Give yourself a word. Jesus. You want to preach to somebody. Preach to yourself. Amen. You want to minister and pray and lay hands. Minister and pray and lay hands on your Amen. Jesus. I want you to look at you through God's eyes. Are you really who he called you to be? Are you really doing what he told you to do? God is warning you. He ain't warning your neighbor. He ain't warning your family. He ain't warning your co-workers. He ain't warning your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your mama, your sister, your auntie. He is warning you Amen. to recognize all the signs and to make God your one true and only God. God is seeking a nation that will stand before the evils of this 
world. Amen. And we'll do right by God, not by man. God expects us to follow him, to trust him in anything and everything he brings you to, he will bring you through. Yes. Amen. Will you finally accept his warnings and trust him completely. Yes. Somebody say, I accept God's I warnings. Accept I accept God's, God's warnings. warnings. And then say, Lord, forgive me of my disobedience. Lord, Lord forgive me of my disobedience. Listen, we ain't got no time left. When the prophet starts preaching like this, we ain't got no time left. We really don't. You know, I shared something that I had to reach you. And I'm, I'm going to finish with this. We have Pearls of the King 23. And toward the end, the Holy Spirit dropped it in my spirit. There were three people that were there that day that had a spirit of death on them. A spirit of murder. And I couldn't understand it. And that's why God gave me this word. He wanted me to see. Oh yeah, I I I, I will kill some people. I will take them out. And he said, if they won't repent today and get out of their own way, they won't be here much longer. And you need to tell the people that are here that there is a spirit of death over some women in this house. Do you know how hard that was for me to tell somebody that? I don't want that blood on my hands. And I'm not going to carry the blood on my hands. Because I'm going to do what God tells me to do. So it's a lot of people that don't understand me, they don't like me, and I don't care. I got to do what God told me to do. Amen. 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 